Over the last few weeks, I've been really thinking about why people can't go any further. Why they hear the decree of God, yet they can't go any further. And the words came to me is that leave it behind. Most folks have not left it behind. The hardest part about change is leaving the past behind. Somebody say amen to that. Life will leave a mark on you, and if you're not careful, your past will will only follow you, not only follow you, but it will also torment you. We often wonder why people always go back to what they have been delivered and rescued from. The past is real. Amen. Amen. Leaving it behind is not denial. It's growth. Leaving it behind is not denial. It's what? Growth. God wants to do a new thing, but you must let him. Somebody say let him. He cannot do it unless you what? Let him. You have not left the past behind. You got to leave it behind. So I say, leave it behind. Behind. Because in Exodus 3 and 17, kind of bringing it from the message I taught last week, we call between a rock and a hard place. But in Exodus chapter 3, verse 17 today, it says that, and I have said, I will bring you out of the affliction of Egypt unto the land of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Parasites, Hivites and Jebusites unto a land flowing with milk and honey. Most promises and or or opportunities come with the fight. Most promises and or opportunities come with the what? And she says, I'm going to give you the land flowing with milk and honey. But he said, before you get there, you got to fight some stuff. Come on, amen. See, because if he had really told them that he was going to give them that, and if he had said they were going to fight, I believe they would have denied it before it even started. Come on, amen. Most people forfeit the promise because they are not willing to fight. I'll read that again. Most folks forfeit the promise because they are not willing to what? Fight. In marriages, we got to fight for our relationship. Amen. Some of us had to fight for our jobs. Amen. Some of us have to fight to be recognized. You got to get that. Amen. You got to fight to get to the promised land. Something happened that took them so long. In Joshua chapter 5, verse 6, New Living Translation, the Israelites had traveled in the wilderness for 40 years until all the men were old enough to fight in battle when they left Egypt had died. For they disobeyed the Lord, and the Lord vowed that he would not let them enter into the land that was sworn to give us, a land flowing with milk and honey. If I was to start, I could teach a financial class just on this text alone, but I'm not teaching a financial class. Because one of the things that I find that God said to Joshua, and God was talking to Abraham, he said, I'm going to give you some land. Now, let's talk about what land. Land is real estate. Real estate is money. Come on, you got to get that, amen. God, so I'm about to give you some stuff. I'm about to give you your own land, your own real estate. I'm about to give you some money, amen. amen. But you got to fight. Amen. So I say fight. fight. Because what's happening is, is you got to understand that you got to fight for what God wants for you. Amen. The Lord vowed that he would not let them enter into a land that he, would, that he was going to give them. Changing the script. Living life between a rock and a hard place can be a thing of the past. Some of you right now are living most of your life between a rock and a what? Mm -hmm. Most people, a lot of people right now, most of their life, they're living between a what? Rock and a what? Hard place. Changing the script, rewriting history, creating a new narrative is hard work. Now I understand why God put obstacles between Egypt and the promised land. If he had just given it to them, they wouldn't have changed and they wouldn't have been the people that he needed them to be. 
God just can't give us stuff without obstacles. Okay, here's a math equation for a spiritual, a spiritual math equation. The old you plus a new situation equal waste the blessings. Amen. The old you plus a new situation equals what? Wasted. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. If we take the old you, right, put you in a new situation, because you haven't changed, you haven't left the past behind, you're going to waste the blessing. Okay, it's almost like you take a sweaty, musty person and put them in a brand new t-shirt. <laughs> t-shirt, right, you know what I'm saying? The t-shirt eventually is going to be wasted, am I right? Because you should have got the sweat off, you should have got the must off, all those things. Come on, amen. So God is trying to put us in new situations, but we have not left the past, what? Behind. And so now you're in new stuff, but the old stuff is rising up because you haven't left it. And so we're wondering why. See, we want to blame other folks, but the problem is you were there, you were there, and you were there. So it's really not other people because you were there, you were there, and you were there. So maybe it could have been you. There was a man, there was a story about a man who was... Laying on his couch. And his, and his daughter put some Limburger cheese on his lip. And he woke up. And he said, I smell something. And he went to the bathroom and said, I smell it. And he went, went upstairs and he said, smell it. I smell it. He went outside and he smelled it. And he says, the whole world smells like Limburger cheese. But what it was, the smell was on him. It wasn't on the world. See, when we don't leave it behind, we carry it with us. Amen? So the old you plus a new situation equals what? Wasted blessings. Yeah. We wonder why. It's because they have not left it, left it behind them. Amen? Psychologically, most people never rebound beyond what they know. What they know that others know that's close to them in their experience. Most folks can never rebound what they know and what they've experienced than what other folks can experience. Have experience, amen? amen? The promised land of flowing milk and honey was attainable, but it took 40 years. It wasn't supposed to take 40 years. Come on, help me now. It's not supposed to take that long. I want to help somebody. What you're doing right now, what you're going through, is not supposed to take that long. It's not supposed to take that long to get it right. Come on. It's not supposed to. Tell your neighbor, say, it's not supposed to. But when you don't leave it behind you, it's going to take longer than it should take. Come on. Amen. Remember what I say? The old you, you come on now, the old you into a new situation equals what? Wasted blessings. It's not supposed to take that. Come on. So, so no matter what, they, 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 he has spoke to them, but no matter how beautiful and positive people make it appear, there's a psychological barrier that keeps people bound because they don't leave it behind them. Come on, amen? You, you mad at everybody that looked like the person that did you wrong because you didn't leave it behind. The affliction is real. The struggle is real. When, a pe when people live a certain way, it affects them beyond the place of affliction. There's a lingering residual residue of what you've been through. I want to say that again. I'm, I'm trying to set the stage for why people can't move to the next level. And so I said, God, show me this. And I say there's a lingering residual residue of what you have been going through on you and some people right now. Yeah. My objective today is this. God wants you to look like you've never been through what you're currently growing through. Come on now. I'm going to repeat that again. That's good, isn't it? That's good, isn't it? God wants you to look like you've never been through what you're currently growing through. Yeah. I'm going to say it again. Somebody get this. God wants you to look like you've never been through what you're currently growing through. 
No, I didn't say going through. I said what? Growing through. God wants you to look like you're not grow, going through anything. Come on. But you're growing through it all. Because some of us are going to learn to leave the past what? Behind. And when you do that, something happens in your life. Come on. Amen. When you look at first lady at the beginning of church, she didn't look like, come on now, what she was going through. But some of y'all ain't going through nothing and you look like you're going through something. Because you won't leave the past what? Behind you. Woo. He told the lame man, he said, get up and walk. Huh? I know, no, you got to get to a place, come on, because my objective that God wants you to look like You've never been through what you're currently growing through. Come on, I say growing through. When we take a look at the Bible, we must look at it most figuratively and literally. The Bible is more than a bunch of stories showing us that God is good. It has always been God's intention to bless his people and to give them their own land. Come on, I, I got that by myself, amen. That it's been God's intention to always give me my own land. Say, neighbor... It's been God's intention to give you your own land. He says, Abraham, I'm going to make you the father of many what? Nations. And he's saying space. God want to bless us, amen? But some of you can't shake off that you ain't never been blessed before. Come on, amen? Mm, mm, mm. See, because you've never had it, you're now carrying the weight of never had it. Yeah. But he proclaimed on your life, come on, amen, so he want to take you to another place in your life. Amen. I think if you save, I, mean, I know, next time I'm going to say, you save where you land at. He talked to, he had talked to slaves, come on now, who, was, who had, had, I didn't want to get ahead of myself, 40 years of incarceration, said, I'm going to give you some land. Where you land at? Y'all ain't talking back to me now. Come on. Because in Genesis 12, 1, I'm going to take you to the word. Say, we're going to leave it behind. Say, say, we're going to leave it behind. Genesis 12, 1. The Lord said to Abram, leave your native country, your relatives, your families, your father's family, and go to the what? The The land that I will show you. God will never show it to you if he ain't prepared to get it to you. Yes. Woo! But the problem is, some of y'all ain't willing to fight. Yes. He showed it to you, but you won't fight. Yes. Come on, amen. amen. He showed it to you, amen. Come on, amen. amen. Every time that he gave us something, we had to fight for it. Amen. Come on, amen. amen. Come on. Abram, Abram hadn't even, he hadn't even got anything yet. And God said, this is what I'm going to give you. With God, there's always a plan. With God, there's always a reason. And with God, he breaks your comfort zones. Amen. See, the problem is some of y'all are too comfortable. Amen. We are too comfortable. We're not where we need to be, but we're still comfortable. Amen? Amen? There is a desire to always do more for God, and it should be. Okay, 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 here we go, y'all. I'm going to help somebody. I'm going. I'm going to get there. Exodus 3.17. And he said, and I'm going to go back to another scripture again because I'm trying to build a case. And, And I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction. Oh, he tells Egypt. He says, Egypt, you are in affliction. You don't even realize that you're in trouble. You didn't even realize that you're a slave. You didn't even realize you, have, you don't have rights. I'm about to take you from a place where you have no rights to a place that you're going to own. Amen. I'm about to take you from a renter to an owner. Amen. But some of ooh, can I say, go there, Pastor. Some of us rather rent than own because we think it has less responsibilities. But if you, if you rent it, you still own it. You just own it for somebody else. Amen. Come on, amen. I'm about to take you somewhere. I brought you out of your flicks of Egypt unto a land of the Canaanites, Hittites. You know the people. What is the affliction? 400 years of slavery as a nation. 
Slavery affects the mindset. Slave, listen to me, listen to me. A slavery affects a mindset. So he was talking to a people that had been slaves for over 400 years. So now he's trying to speak to them. Watch me now. But he's speaking to the mind of a slave and not a free person. Sometimes God is speaking to you. He's speaking to you at the next level, but, you, but, but you're listening to him like a slave. Oh, come on, come on, come on, amen. Why? No, why? Why? You say, sorry, say why, Pastor? Because it's from generation to generation. Generation after generation was born to slavery, and they died as a slave. So now what you see, the affliction you saw, became your reality. But it was not your destiny. Oh, come on, come on. Just because it's my reality don't mean it's not my, that's my destiny. Come on. But he was speaking to them as free people, but they were responding to them as slaves. Amen. Come on, amen. How many times somebody said that God's going to bless your life, and you walk away and said, not me? Huh? Come on. So now he said, I'm going to give you a land flow of milk and honey. But remember, they have 400 years of slavery on their back. That's why. Oh, come on, get this. Remember. Old you, new opportunities equal what? Wasted. Because you're still thinking like a slave. Come on. Come on, amen. amen. I could go so many places with this. Because, there, because when you have a slave man, you have no hope, no future, no destiny. And only, and only you want, and you're waiting for somebody to help you out. The promised land, come on now, symbolizes God's intention to establish a homeland for his chosen people. God said, I'm trying to establish a new home front for you. Come on. God said, you're not going to be homeless anymore. I'm about to give you a land. Come on. It's a home place now. Oh, but, but, but the people can't understand it yet because they're still thinking like a slave. All right, I'm going to give you a real example. There were years, so I say years ago, when my company closed. No, 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 I'm going to tell you a story. Y'all want to hear this is good. Yeah, this is good. This is a good one. When my company closed years ago, and I went from six figures to no figures to broke, from six figures to making $187 a week, I remember going to the tire store on the corner and buying $25 tires, buying the same $25 tires over and over again. Because my mindset was all I can do is buy $25 tires with no warrants on them because they popped. The guy said, got $25 more? Dollars? Right, May pop. And I'm like, whoa. And I started looking. I could have got some cheap new tires for $55. At least they had a warrant on them. But because, but because my mind was still in, 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 in tragedy, my mind was in bankruptcy. Come on, and I didn't, I didn't go there. My mind was in brokenness, so no, I, it was hard for me to shift out of that. See, it is, it, when you go through it, when you go, listen to me, listen to me. When you go through it, it's hard to think differently. Come on, amen. You got to leave the past what? And I remember the first new set of tires I bought after I got myself together. I think my brother showed me to go to his tire place, right? And he would always joke me. And I put them new tires on. I was like, this is how new tires feel. God, so mighty. Because the old tires, I could feel them. <laughs> right. Because I was a day where somebody else traded them in, and I gave some, right? Come on, amen? amen. I said, that's how new times feel. <laughs> and I was so embarrassed to, 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 to realize that I had been living like a slave because of what I had been going through. Amen. Come on. See, slavery is bigger than chains. The slavery I'm talking about today is in the mind.
The act of blessing of land conveys God's faithfulness and his covenant and his desire to bless his people. In Genesis 15, 13. And then the Lord said to Abram, Know for certain that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not their own. They will be enslaved and mistreated for 400 years. So he says, Abram, your people are going to go through some stuff, but it doesn't mean I'm not faithful. Amen. Going through things does not mean God is not faithful. It's just part of the process. Amen? Amen? Because what I realize is that there's a term that when you go through something long enough, it's called P. T-S-S. It's called post-traumatic slave syndrome. Yeah. <clears throat> it's behind me. Most people right now suffer with P-T-S-S. Post-traumatic slave syndrome. And here's what it says. And I, and I quote it from Brianna Evans, so I just didn't pull up some out of the air. New studies show that a generation exposed to a trauma has genetic and behavior changes that pass down two generations. It says that it says that that when one that that, that what's going on what's going on with, with 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 me come on listen to me listen to me goes two generations. Come on. So what we what we're realizing is that some of us right now, some of us right now are, are some of you right now are, are two generations from slavery. Come on, amen. Yeah. So you're stuck, you're suffering from PTSS right now. Because talk to a three-year-old about slavery, and they're gonna say, What? Yeah. Huh? Because they're three or four generations away. So here's what I'm finding out: is that many of you and many of us. We still are so close to what God brought us out of. Not only are we suffering, but the people that's close to us suffering the same thing. That's why he says that, that we leave in the hand for our children. Children, that we're talking about generational stuff. So that's the reason why I'm preaching so hard. That's the reason why I go to the school on Monday. Listen to me. I don't have to go to the school on Monday. I have a grown son who's doing okay. I don't have to go to school. But God said, don't listen to me. He said, don't be so selfish because I've assigned you to break generations. Come on, you got to get that. I was son Some of you have been assigned to break generation curses. Amen. Because if you don't break it, who's going to break it? Who that, who's going to talk to them, amen? Who's going to share with them? you got to get that. Because the enemy's job is to convince you that what you're doing is not important. It's to convince you of that. So you lay out, you chill, you act like you ain't. No, what you're called to do is important. Because I wasn't trying to go. I, I tried to get first day to give me a reason to stay home. You know what she said to me? This is she good. She good. She said, uh, "You gonna be like all the other preachers that don't keep your word." Come on now. Come on now. Because I was thinking of a reason not to go, <laughs> and then when I get there, they walking up to me. What's up, Pastor? Where you been? We miss you. See, the enemy's job, because I'm still with P-T-S-S. -S. See, right now, some of you, a new community, can I, can I step in your stuff this morning? Some of y'all ain't doing what you're supposed to do here. Hello. You ain't showing up. You ain't doing what you're supposed to do. Come on, amen. amen. And folks are suffering because you ain't doing what you're supposed to do. Love you, but it's the truth. Amen. And we as a church can't elevate to the level we elevate to. Come on, amen. amen. Because you because you're so because you're slow. Amen. amen. Come on. Amen. And I said, oh God. So now I'm saying, okay, God, I'm 
I'm on assignment now. Because that little, I don't know what young man had, because so I, I, I was beginning to look like the other dude that ain't show up in his life. I began to look like his daddy who said he's going to be there and won't never there. Yeah. There's another black man that said he's going to be here and ain't here. Come on. Yeah. And I'm waiting for somebody else to say, Pastor, I'm coming with you next time. Yeah. Can you imagine we show with two, three of them, two or three of us yeah. and we just show up? Because we try to break some stuff. When the school opened, I already told the principal that I want to show up once a week when the bus drive up and just stay in there. What's up? What's up? What's up? Come on. I just want, hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. See, because it ain't about a sermon. It ain't about likes right now. Come on. It's about generations. Come on. Because I'm going to leave some stuff behind. Because when we move, we move beyond our feelings. You got to move beyond that. We got to move beyond our frustrations. We got to move beyond our failures, our faults, and our fears. Because where God, God is saying, if I'm going to take you to another place, you got to leave some stuff behind. You got to leave your feelings Frustrations, failures, faults, and fears. Because if you don't leave those behind, you can't get to the place that God wants you to be at. Amen? Because all of us have that. We all are affected. We said, don't nobody want to hear from me. Yes, you don't know what God wants to do in your life. Come on, Amen? The old you is wrapped up in a group, is wrapped into a group of emotions. If you're not careful, though, the emotion will imprison you to the past. The struggle is real. The rock in the hard place is real. Therefore, you must live life beyond your emotions. That's why God is giving you a new zip code. He's I'm about to give you some old land, Abraham. So I say, new zip code. Come on, amen. Ooh. Because sometimes you have to leave a good place for a better place. Oh, come on, amen. amen. I gotta leave a good place for what? Because in second in Philippians 2 5, I'm ready to wind this puppy in now. Let this mind, here's how I can leave it behind. Philippians 2 5 tells me. Let this mind be in you that is also in Christ Jesus. If you don't change your mind, you can't leave it behind. Amen. I got a different mindset, amen? amen. I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to figure out AI right now. Anybody, anybody quiz about AI? Yeah. Y'all don't even know what AI is? Come on, y'all know what AI is? Artificial Intelligence. I'm trying to figure this out, Stephen. I'm trying to figure this out, Merle. Tell what if, you know, you're trying to tell me that I can spit something in the computer and it can run. Yo, some of y'all jobs gonna be AI. Yeah. You better get ahead of it. Come on, amen. Yeah. On a cruise ship three years ago, that joke was already serving beer. <laughs> he was already bartender. Give me three on the rocks. No, listen to me, but three years ago, and he was serving his stuff. And bring it right to you. Hey, yeah, I'm trying to learn this stuff. I'm trying to get ahead of it, amen? amen. I'm changing my mind. Philippians 3, 13 to 14. Forgetting what is behind, come on now, and straining toward what is ahead. Press toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called you. Oh, you got to get that, amen. I am straining for what's ahead, amen. I'm forgetting what's right behind me. I got to forget that, amen. Oh, you didn't speak to me. I'm going to forget that. Amen. You tripping, I'm going to forget that because I'm pressing towards it. Why am I going to spend all my day messing with a hater? Haters going to what? Amen. They're hating, right? 
But I'm studying AI. I'm trying to learn some stuff. Amen? Amen. Y'all better recognize Isaiah 43, 18. Forget the former things that do not dwell on the past. He, he tells Isaiah, see, I am doing a new thing. When you decide, and this is it. This is my last slide. When you decide to leave behind, you discover some, if not all these things. The first thing you discover is new promises. When you leave stuff behind, the first thing you discover is what? New promises. See, if when you leave stuff behind, you say, oh, I didn't know. Oh, the promises of God, the Bible that God says yes and what? Amen. I'm leaving some stuff behind. Amen. I ain't caught up in that. And then when you leave stuff behind, you discover new possibilities. I got new promises and I got new what? Possibilities. All things are possible to them that what? Believe. I'm seeing because if you start, if you still struggling with, 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 with post slavery disease, you can't, you're not looking for something new, amen? amen. You're going, whoa, it's me. If it wasn't for bad luck, I wouldn't have no luck. Oh. Hey, come on, amen? amen. But new promises, new possibilities. I left old things behind me. It's a possible, amen? It's possible to happen, amen. It's possible, amen. Come on, amen. amen. I'm about to go to another level. Amen. It's possible. Amen. This thing's possible for you, brother Fred. It's possible. It, it, look, you, when, you, when you was down, they, they thought you was out, but you won't out. Well, you just study your next plan. Amen. You was just playing possum. <laughs> so they leave you alone. Amen. Because it's possible. Amen. And then when you leave things behind you, you get new possessions. Oh, come on, amen. Oh, I left some stuff to have. I got some new possessions, amen. Oh, I got some new things. I'm possessing some new things. God will give you some new possessions. Come on, if you leave some old stuff, what? Behind. Come on. That's why I don't mind taking stuff to the thrift store, amen, because I'm about to get some new stuff. Some new possessions, amen. Because mm, I'm going to give you a land. Floyd with milk and honey. But it had to shake the slave off of them. Can't get it. If you see, see, watch this now. Can, can I tell you something about the past? Some folks gonna be where they be. Yes. Whether you whether you like them, they're gonna be where they be. They're gonna do what they do. Until you're blue in the face, they're gonna be what they be. But why can't I be what I be? Huh? You can take them to the water, but you can't make them. So why you holding their head down? Holding their head down too long, you're going to you kill them. Because they ain't trying to drink. Get new promises, new possibilities. Come on. New possessions. Fourth thing, new places. Oh, come on, amen. I leave some stuff behind me because we going what? New places. Going places. I love watching TV and seeing where we've been before. Just recently had the Cannes Festival. First they said, we were standing on the same step. Oh, and you see a LeBron and Moe in Italy, and I said, oh, yeah, that's where he, that's, that's the Mafia Coast. We've been there. Oh, there, oh, Eiffel Tower been there. See, God will take you, let you go new places if you leave the old stuff. Come on. But you got to, you might need some new traveling partners. Because some folks ain't trying to go nowhere. Yeah. Who is Bobo? Say it again. Don't want nothing. Don't want it. Be nothing. That's the term we got at church. We call him Bobo. If I ever call you Bobo, it ain't pretty. See, because I've learned, see, some people, they just like Bobo. They don't want nothing. They don't want to be nothing, amen. They stuck in the past. They ain't leaving nothing behind. I had somebody call me the other day and start talking. You know, you know how people call you sometimes just to brag and tell you what they did, not that they try and talk to you. Amen. Right? Amen. I'm telling you, I got a phone call from a guy the other day, went to school with him, like me. He don't like me at all. He don't like me. 
He don't. He'll call, hey man, I see that little church over there. Ain't nobody at the church, right? <laughs> Yo, I'm just calling you. I ain't talking to you since I bought my house. And you know that I'm the guy that you didn't buy your house with. I gave you advice and you didn't use me. But then he feel like five years later he want to call me and tell me he bought his house. Like, dude, I know you bought the house. And I know you didn't use me. But I bought a bigger house. So <laughs> me. But people going, no, listen to me. People going people to call you. Come on, am I, am I right? They going to call you and try to play me. Come on. He was trying to play me. Come on, man. He was trying to measure me. I love when they try to measure us new community. Come on, amen. You go, you go to that little church over there? Yep. The word is good. What about yours? He ain't touched nobody's babies. ain't slept with nobody's wife. They ain't stole no money. He loved his wife. What about yours? Y'all need to know how to come back. Praise God. Amen. Where am I? Let me go. Let me finish. I'm, I'm digressing. New places. He want to take to new places. Fifth thing. He want to give you new property. Yep. I want to stretch you today. Why do you stay where you are? You're bigger than where you are. Come on, come on, talk to me. Talk to me. You're comfortable. You're comfortable. I don't mean that you may not need to buy a new house today. I'm not telling you that. But when you know you are underachieving, you are comfortable. Yes. And comfort, comfort is a false reality, and it keeps you back from being where you should be and what God wants to do in your life. But your problem is that you don't want to fight the Canaanites. You don't want to fight the Hittites. You don't want to fight the Jebusites. You don't want to fight. You want the land flowing milk and honey, but you don't want to fight. You don't want to fight. That ain't for me. It is for you, but you don't want to I tell my clients that call me. I said, let me tell you about what we're about to embark on. It's about to get crazy for the next 30 days. I'm about to ask you for everything that you never thought you needed. I'm about to get personal with you. But if you hang in there with me, we're going to get to the finish line. I said, ladies, it's kind of like you having a baby. You know when you were pregnant, you said, oh, baby, I'm beautiful. Oh, oh. But the last 40 hours, it hurt. You had to push, push. I said, that's how it's going to be. I tell my clients that because I tell them that you got to push harder than you've ever pushed to get across the finish line. As saints, I tell you, you got to push. And then the last thing you need, you're going to get, is you're going to get new people. God says, if you get rid of some stuff, I'm going to give you some new people in your life. Can I tell you that I'm learning that? That I'm learning to, to benefit and to, and to plug in to good people. Because here's what happens. We go back to our safe places. I'm going to help you. You go back to your safe place and you don't plug into the people that God put in your life to help you get to a new place. Because the reason why you don't plug into them because you got your own issues. You got trust issues. You got lazy issues. You got mindset issues. You got inferiority issues. So you got your own issues when somebody trying to trust you. You don't trust them because you're still dealing with the things that God delivered you from. Come on, amen. And if you learn to plug into the people that God put in your life, it will help you go to another place. The brother's about to turn me on. Is I, I, I met him again about four months ago. And I connect with him. And I never lost contact with him. And he's turning me on to where I need to go. You got to leave some stuff behind you. And if we do that, 
we get to a whole nother place. Because we, I'm going to give them to you again if you want to take a picture of all of them together. God give you new promises, new possibilities, new possession, new places, new property, new people. And when God does that, you're so glad you left the hat behind you. You're so glad of that. God wants to do some great things in our life. But we're going to leave some things behind. And we leave some things behind, something special happens. Leave it behind. Let's stand to your feet if you will. Hi, it's Lady Van Dyke. We're glad that you joined us today on our YouTube page. Don't forget to click and subscribe. And if you'd like to find out more information about our ministry, log on to www.nccfamily.us. We look forward to seeing you again.